Uh, yeah, so well, uh, my practitioner program six months uh, project was uh, an irrigation system inspired by nature that could really help us like um, solve like, well, I wanted to learn about how to use um, a better irrigation system. So uh, first the table of context is like, um, so I'm gonna talk about the scooping phase, discovery, abstracting, uh, creating and evaluating um, insights and lessons. And um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about the process. So it's like the past. Uh, the creation and the development. So um, in the scooping phase, uh, I'll talk about the challenge. So the challenge is to create an irrigation system that can really um, adapt to the changes we're globally um, facing, like uh, we're rising uh, heats and more droughts. Uh, particularly in Spain, where it's my project focus on uh, Madrid in my village. So this irrigation sy system was principally for my grandma design. So um, for that, I tried to see the functions. So the functions are like the microclimate that really auto-regulate itself, the irrigation system that distribute the water, and the adaptation, so change within an environment. Um, so for me, I really wanted to design something that was auto-regulated, scalable, and that used life-friendly chemistry. So for the discovery phase, um, I start researching at uh, many organisms. I started to look at the leaf veins, uh, where I, if you can see if I, I zoom in, like I did some sketches of how the real like the leaf veins really are distributed and um, like um, also like to burn and um, and also the aquifer, which is actually an aha moment because I was in in the forest, like near my house. And then I start seeing like this kind of um, valleys small valleys where like the grass was um, like all year long almost um, covered in green grass, which is actually what I was looking for, you know, like to I try to uh, retain water at some areas that could really uh, help me to understand how in nature it can, um, how nature create a space where uh, the water it's retained all year long. So um, for that, um, for well, for the leaf, I abstracted the form, the tuber in the process, and the aquifer, the system. So at the abstracting phase, I started to abstract all these uh, principles. And here also you can see like drawings. And uh, um, yeah, so for the leaves, um, it's like the main point is the interconnected network that I applied to my design. For the two burned, I, um, I abstracted the concept of the process to retain water in, uh, in a container. And for the aquifers, I um, applied the um, principle of creating a layer system that could really retain water. Uh, throughout any specific space. So um, at the creating phase, I started to look back and to the main objectives that I had. So I didn't want to use plastic because uh, everywhere I go, I like there's all, all types of plastic tubes that they are used in the gardening and they really are really damaged and when they are broken or anything, they're just left there. So I really wanted to eradicate that, to not use harmful chemicals and no electronics, because that's also a really big problem. Because for timers, um, for watering timers, like uh, you use an electric device, but the e-waste is a more like a more, a more important issue that we're getting like, um, nowadays. So for that, uh, for my 
inspiration process, I started look at, looking at how in the past they did that. Because of course they had no plastic, no that many harmful chemicals and not electronics. So I started looking at the past and I saw that I discovered that in India, there was a strategy that they use uh, clay pipes to design a system to irrigate the waters, uh, to irrigate like their lands. So I took inspiration of that. Also, another aha moment was when I realized that also I could learn a lot about the bees. So I could learn about how uh, the wax is also uh, part of the, root, the roots to cover and protect from water loss and the panel structure, which are hexagons, which I will tell you later why is that important. So uh, also the urban rift, as I told you, I wanted to create a container. So um, as for inspiration, as I was gonna take, put a container in the garden, I thought, okay, maybe um, I can use that structure also to have other functionalities. So also this company is making like, uh, it's um, studying how we can create uh, structures made of clay to be bioreceptive and have like, all kind of plants growing all around so it can also be um habitable for uh, birds any plants and insects and finally i decided to create an, an app and why because i thought like um for uh design i wanted to be it like um to to evolve you know in nature everything is evolving every time and to have um a design that could really fit in any context, I thought that it could be really interesting that if you had an app that could really share your insights and your improvements, your, your ideas of innovation, that you try them, that you test them, and then you, you find that, that it's really cool for your context, then you can share it in an app so that you can really help others which are in your similar context to apply those innovations in their design. So, well, this is the design itself. It's uh, basically an hexagon, like uh, as I told you, I was gonna tell you about the hexagons. So the shape is hexagon because the hexagons are the ones who can really uh, be the ones who really fit in any uh, area, in any, with any shape, you know, because the gardens hand had like really a lot of um, different shapes. So in order to have something that could really fit in any garden, I had to do something that was interconnected. So um, geometrical um, shapes that could be also modular, that could really um, fit at any shape. I thought that like, I just had a aha moments. I was like, yeah, the hexagons, exactly. So, um, these are also the pieces that uh, compose the, the whole uh, system so that you can really um, take the ones that you want and create the shape that you want. So this is just an example, but you can really make it like uh, um, straight or just um, small, like, you know, like a big area on the left and just a small area on the right. And here, here are the drawings for manufacturing so that really can use that to create and manufacture all your pieces at locally so that you don't really have to send the product to like um, maybe Australia, let's say. So I don't have to sell like sell the, the pieces, but instead I just share my drawings and there they can make it locally. Uh, so for the evaluating phase, I just review the key features of the design. So um, as the pipes uh, mimic the, um, the aquifer layers. So as you can see, like the bottom part is covered with wax so that it creates like a really permeable layer for water to be stored 
in between another layer that it's above. So because it's a tube, of course, but uh, you understand. And um, so the upper part is not covered with wax so that it really, with the porosity of the material, it, the, the water really can get to the, to the soil. And then also the idea is also for the grass or any plant roots to get to the, to the pipes so that they really get the water that they need instead of just watering the, wa watering the plants for water that they might not need. So um, I also had an idea that uh, for the container, it could also not just be like for store water, but to have like um, filtration layers that could really mimic the, the rain and the mountains so that they really get the water. So the water that it's on the roots, like in the pipes, are really water that it's going through a process of filtration that really creates um, more appropriate water for plants. So it's not, so it doesn't come from the, um, from the um, from our house, and also as um, you can connect your um, your well, the water that you get from the roof, uh, from the rain, you connect it to the roof so that you really don't need to use water like extra water. So do you just connect it there, and then if you if it rains, it refills the container. But if it's really, really uh, like a big drought, then you can manually just add some water. And well, here is also the app, so you can have an idea of what I meant. Inyaki? So that Sorry, you... we're gonna have to wrap this up very soon. Okay, yeah. Thank you. And uh, well, so the study, um, well, I will pass to the keen sites and lessons. So I love to have like this global view of how biomimicry really zooms in and out one and again and again and again so that you really understand the whole process. So also the structure and methodology so that I could follow a path even though I can go back and forth, but there is a structure and the translation. I really love the tr translation of how we can really abstract the principles of uh, nature. So the future of my project, I really want to um, create a portfolio of my projects so that I can really like learn from them and then teach others to, um, to learn biomimicry. So my idea here is to also like, it's, it could be like a really a workshop, an activity for students or even like uh, for a community to do for their own garden or even their own uh, organic um, garden, vegetables gardens. And um, yeah, I thought it could be like a really good for uh, to create a project for the community to investigate. And then after that, to te teach them about biomimicry. So here are also my details, my email. And uh, I just wanted to thank you yeah, for the whole like um, process because I really enjoyed it so much and just hope we can still work in on learn from nature. Well done. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yaki. This was phenomenal.